If I shall die before I wake. Oh my god. That's the most intense thing I think we've ever had happen. I pray the Lord. Adam, this is insane. My soul to take. I have a big problem. I kind of feel like I need it. I feel crazy. I didn't plan on this, but you, you wanted me to come get you. So, here we are again. I'm just kidding. What up, homies? Today we are going to be reacting to Selena Spooky Boo's video called My Husband is Psychic. And for a while I wanted to do a reaction video on her because I think she is hilarious. I think she's fabulous. She is one of my favorite people on YouTube. And she has some abilities of her own. And I thought this video would be a good learning lesson for not just the viewers, but if she were to watch this, it would help her understand some things as well. And so I will be inserting some clips here and there and pretty much giving my take what I see, psychic impressions. And as always, I'll put my notes on Patreon. However, just a little side note, a little bit of water kind of got on my notes. So there is a part that looks a little messed up and I'm sorry. Condensation is a bitch when it's 87 degrees outside. So yeah. But anyway, we're just gonna go right into the video. Hi, I have a problem. I have a big problem. I went to the thrift store. Oh, fuck, guys, I don't know. I kind of feel like I need it. I do, right? So I left it. I didn't get it. I didn't think about it. I was driving away. I was probably like 15 minutes on the road to another town and I was like, yeah, the bear. The bear is in my mind. There's something in this bear and I've tried to put it behind me all day. But no, I felt really weird about it and I've tried going to like eight different places today and no matter what I'm doing, my brain keeps going back to this little boy and his memories. And I think I need to go get him, which is about 45 minutes back in the other direction. He's there, he's waiting for me, I can feel it. Okay, we're here. Do you see it? Do you feel it? Am I crazy? I feel crazy. I'm gonna need to know your story. We're gonna have to talk at some point, buddy. Because you're mine now. I didn't plan on this, but you, you wanted me to come get you. So I drove 40 minutes back to get you, babe. Here he is. We're days later. We're about three days later. He has remained in my car the entire time. I don't bring haunted things in the house anymore. Unless it's on accident, because that's happened a few times. <clears throat> Adam, how do you feel about my thrifting? It's been a thing, our whole relationship. Uh, the one thing that I don't think of when I buy things, I'm like, oh my God, this is so creepy and cool, but I don't like take a minute to catch the vibe and see if it's haunted or not. And there was at one point where I did bring this doll into the house. It was like um, some tourist kind of doll, but I thought it looked really, really unique. <laughs> Do you remember that doll? Yeah. Things started happening and this is back when Adam was a lot more of a skeptic and um, he became a believer. Do you remember the nightmares you had about that doll? I, I remember, I remember the nightmares. Yeah. And 30 seconds in and it's to like almost two minutes. But the thing is, this is a common tactic used by spirits and entities that are attached to objects typically they look for those that are more on the sensitive side because those types of people are much easier to affect whether that's through any type of spiritual attack or manipulation all for the sake of energy consumption there's some hidden agendas if you will but yes sending a sensitive thoughts and images to trick or manipulate them into taking the haunted object home is a great indicator for whether or not an object is haunted. Plus, of course, if the person starts experiencing uh, paranormal activity or nightmares, sleep paralysis, sudden onset of mental or physical disturbances or illnesses are other signs. I ended up leaving that day and I left. I was about 20 minutes on the road going to this next place and I could not stop thinking about this bear. Um, but in a weird way where this bear was no longer really the bear in my mind um, It all kind it all came together it came together why I was drawn to it now Here's a weird thing. I did not feel anything negative on this bear I have a very clear image of what I think is going on with this bear But the only interesting thing right cuz like you'll see in the clips before um, I'm like, yeah, there's definitely nothing negative in there since I brought this home. I have been sick 
I have been coughing and feeling weird. So here, here's something. I feel like Adam is getting more intuitive over the years because definitely since he opened up from being a skeptic, I feel like he's had more paranormal experiences than I actually have in the last year. But um, I'm gonna write down what I feel about this bear because like I don't know if I'm correct yet. That's why we got the tools of the trade. We're just gonna start with a little demon away just to block it. I definitely shouldn't have started snuggling him before I, uh, you know, sprayed him down, but he's been, he's been locked in the car, so maybe maybe the ghost is in my car now. But I'm gonna write down on a piece of paper what I think is inside this bear. Adam, I'm gonna pass him off to you. And oh, I want, no. Yep. No. I want you to see what vibes you get. No. I sense No, yeah, no, no, no. Wait. Wait till I'm, did you say polyester? Yes! Adam! Wait till I'm done. <laughs> Three minutes and 55 seconds in. So since starting this video, I've had to run to the bathroom twice. So a little background, it took me three days to get this done. That includes watching it, taking notes, and doing this recording because I kept having issue after issue after issue with my own health. It's been a rough three days. But yes, I've had to run to the bathroom twice within a span of almost four minutes. So when I woke up today, I was having a wee bit of stomach issues, but it wasn't like out of the norm. Like I have, I have some sort of pain every day. There's like a base level, if you will. So I would say my base level is usually out of four, okay? That's my norm, that's every day. And it was actually going away and then about four minutes in, it spiked and got a lot worse. And when I mean a lot worse, I mean like a lot worse that I cannot describe on YouTube because of monetization reasons. <laughs> but, um, yeah, was in a fun time. And uh, to me, that is red flag number two. So if it's affecting my health, not just their health, but my health. That's a rut row. And interestingly enough, last night I had a dream about a man trying to kill me. So there's the nightmares. To me, I mean, they're not really nightmares anymore because I'm desensitized. But for the average person, that's not a good dream. And uh, yeah, wasn't the best of times. Oh, oh, oh. And, and that night, I also got bum-rushed by a negative entity. Now, you know, I was dealing with a client who was having issues. One could say it was from her or it had to do with making this video. I'm only stating this to be transparent, okay? But I suspect it might have been more to do with the client. But I'm stating it in this video in case something similar happens again, and it's kind of like my record of it, but I'm just putting out, putting it out there, especially like, let's say Selena watches this video or her husband watches this video and she experienced the same thing. Well, then I will know for sure that it has to do more with the bear than my client. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. But yeah. When I was bum rushed, I was awake. I was taking out the garbage for trash pickup. And uh, yeah, but I was able to deflect it with my barrier of light. So it wasn't all bad. It was just like a what the fuck moment, if you know what I mean. But uh, having negative dreams and being attacked, more red flags, more red flags. So I decided to do my channel before I watched her results to see if we got any of the same stuff. I know every single medium is different and we're not always gonna get the same information as one another. That's okay. That doesn't mean one is wrong. It means the information that we're getting is probably right. It's just the interpretation is what needs a little uh, adjusting. But I wanted to do this for my own validation, but also because I didn't want what her results were going to be to influence anything I got. And so I am going to relay those here right now. But regardless of 
who's right or whatnot. There's still something that can be learned here. And let's talk about it. Because the first thing I saw immediately were three faces. All male kind of energies. They had like that male presence. But one looked like kind of like a wolf fox mix but it kept shaping into a man and so you know what it reminded me of the big bad wolf and kind of like villainizing somebody the second one now this one I'm gonna have to try to AI render if you don't see it in the video it's because I couldn't get the image close enough and I don't want to like put anything out there I want it to be as close as possible but if I can render it I'll put it up here but this thing was so scary looking I couldn't draw it I tried drawing it and that's why I did this part in um, pencil because I figured if I couldn't draw it properly I could just erase it instead of wasting paper since your girl's running low on the uh, notepads but this thing was like nightmare fuel kind of stuff. It was so scary. I don't like when they smile at me. You have know this from other videos, but when entities, negative entities smile at me, all creepy with all of like fucked up teeth, mm, that's my ick. That is my ick. Clowns are my ick and that is my ick. Okay, but this thing was the stuff of nightmares and I when I was writing these notes I'm like this thing's gonna freaking haunt my ass in my dreams just watch luckily it didn't <laughs> and then the third one for sure a thought form was trying to look like a human face but instead looks like a child's drawing of a face with big bulgy eyes and an off-centered mouth I put lol to me it was kind of funny looking but uh it's not funny. It's not fun in games. I try to make light of these things to erase the fear factor because we don't want to be scared or fearful or have any kind of negative thoughts when it comes to learning about the paranormal because they feed off of that. We don't want that. I'm trying to like almost desensitize you guys, but I know sometimes it doesn't work that way, but we're trying to make education a little fun and not scary but um at the end of this i'll go through like my theories and deductions of all this information anyhow i also started seeing a not very detailed child like figure so i couldn't see certain um details but i wrote down as much as i could so it was child in height i would say toddler in height dark hair, wearing white clothes that are very bright in addition to a pair of angel wings. Eyes are blue. I start feeling extremely sleepy all of a sudden. Then I start seeing this elaborate building from the inside with very tall ceilings and highly decorated walls and ceilings like murals and things. Like the fancy like angels and the yeah, I forget what that's called. I'm sorry. I'm a bad artist. But you get the gist. I, I didn't see that ex specific like painting of the hands, but it's similar in style. And like I said, the walls and the ceilings were tall. The wooden fixtures are innately carved and turn into the wooden rafters of the ceiling. It's giving church. However, it was so fast and like flashed it was hard to get every single detail, but it's giving church vibes, but I'm not 100% sure. I do see shades of turquoise. I see white fabric with blue polka dots, residual energies, and then I had to stop and take a break because that's when my stomach pain got so bad. It got so bad. And then I picked back up the next day, which was 524.24 at 2.35 p.m. My pain level at this point is zero. 
And it's important to state that because I wanted to keep track of the things I was feeling in my body. Because remember, the day before I had a little stomach issue and usually my base level is at four. However, however, the next day my base level or I should say the pain that I was feeling was a zero, which is fucking rare for me, but I'll take it. But it was a zero. The dreams the night before were very negative. I was experiencing some messed up shit. That's all I will say. We're not going to get too detailed. I feel like the bear was used as an escape and holds many negative emotions. And then I start feeling nauseous. So I went from zero pain and zero whatever to feeling nauseous. Uh oh. All right, so now we're going back into the video. First question I wanna say, which I get a lot, is how do the spirits get inside of the things? I don't know. I think energy sometimes sees something and just resonates with it and goes inside of it. 620, she asks, how do spirits get inside of the bear or any object? She doesn't know, which is okay. Like, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. So technically, spirits don't go inside, they attach. Nothing is inside anything. The object doesn't have a consciousness. A consciousness can be inside a body because it works through the brain and other parts of the body. But the body of an inanimate object is not a living organism and doesn't have a soul or a consciousness for something to take over. Therefore, if a spirit or entity wants to attach itself to the inanimate object, it can, but it can't possess it. I'm just stating this because entities can possess a person and take them over, but they can't possess an inanimate object because there's no consciousness to possess. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Spirits or entities can attach themselves to objects similarly to how they attach themselves to people. If a living person was extremely fixated on an object, when they were alive, but then passes away. But for whatever reason, they're still fixated on that object and are obsessed with it. It can't let go of the 3D and then they become earthbound. That's one way a human spirit can become earthbound and one way that a spirit can attach to an object. Two, items hold energy and can hold fractals of people. And fractals are a type of residual energy. Essentially, when you have enough energy from a person, it almost creates like a copy of them. It's not an exact copy and it doesn't typically have a consciousness. The only way in which it can hold a consciousness is if there's enough negative energy going into it that it starts forming into a thought form and it just has enough energy to have its own consciousness. It's not an exact duplicate of the person's consciousness. It is a collection of negative energy that fed into the thought form to create it. So typically it's the negative emotions and behaviors of a person that created it. So for example, Let's say you have a thought form that is created from depressive energy, sad energy, which is the same thing, anger, um, abusive tendencies, then the personality or consciousness of that thought form will take on those traits. Does that make sense? Let me know down below. But so a fractal is like the duplicate of the person's part of the person's energy, it's not conscious, but it can look like them. Not always, but it can. And then the third way that a spirit or entity can become attached is if a malevolent entity may use an object as part of their evil strategy to be invited into someone's life in order to oppress, AKA haunt and feed off of them so basically, let's use, I don't know, Annabelle or Robert the doll as an example. However, 
the negative entity was created, doesn't matter. It sees the doll as an opportunity to potentially go home with somebody, be invited in to haunt them. They use that as an opportunity to haunt a person. It's very effed up and manipulative, but you know, negative entities are not good. They're a uh, negative. Number four, the obvious way, witchcraft. Someone can intentionally put a spirit or attach an entity to an object. And five, yes, yeah, spirits can just resonate with things. So for example, let's say you have a person, a man, who used to love red sports cars. He didn't own his own, but because he was so stuck in his 3D perspective, he couldn't cross over. But hey, wait, as he's wandering around, he sees a red sports car. Oh my God, that's his dream car. Now he's obsessed with it and he attaches to it. Even though he had no worldly claim to it when he was alive, he still really likes the red sports car and vibes with it. That is another way. But those are like five ways things can become attached. I'm sure there's more, but those are examples off the top of my head. I am, so in my dreams, he wears like um, a sleeping nighty and he has sores in his mouth and blood in his mouth, which is really scary. Oh yeah, I had none of that. Um, to me, he's on this dirt road and he's going like this to me, like he wants up, like he's like three or four. His mother died before him. And in, in this dream, it's weird. It's like he has no family really surrounding him. It's like he's on his own, like he's either like orphan, like he's, he died somewhere around a bunch of other people that were sick, but it wasn't a hospital. So I kind of thought maybe a church. I don't know if he's bad or good, but the same, like I felt like it was good energy. But I've been sick since he got here, but that could just be residual energy, right? And I had, same as you, brown hair, blue eyes, and he had just like a little bit of shaggy brown hair. So how do you feel about that? Eight minutes in. Oh yeah, another dream I had that I nearly forgot, but I was reminded here. Um, I was talking to a bunch of people when I was dreaming and asleep during the previous night. And in this dream, my mouth started to bleed for no reason. I could taste the blood. I could see the blood in my hand. I even went like this and was like, oh my God, my mouth is bleeding. And I didn't know why. That was the, that was all in that dream. It was weird. But it reminded me because Selena was talking about how she was picking up that the boy had mouth sores. But um, I honestly think the little boy energy she was picking up is a type of residual, AKA what I call a fractal. 953, nausea is getting worse. Also the thing that's important to point out yet again is spirits and entities lie. They clearly stated who they think is haunting the bear, which the spirit or entity can run with to make them feel better about it. So they continue to keep the bear within close proximity to them. Just because something is attached to the bear doesn't mean it has to stay like on it or extremely close to it. When I, and um, when Chas and I interviewed Duran from Dead Serious Investigations, he is someone that collects haunted objects and studies them. He does it for educational purposes only. You should definitely follow him. His footage is very interesting and you can learn a lot from him. And so Chas and I did when we interviewed him and we learned that through our own, you know, visions and his experiences too, that even if an entity or spirit is attached to an object, they can hop around between objects. They don't have to stand next to the object. They can go wherever they want. Doesn't matter. The object is kind of just like, it's nice to have, but they don't technically need it. Especially if the objects are already in the house. The strategy or that part of the strategy has been concluded. It got what it wanted. It's invited into the space. So it can just like go wherever it wants in that space and cause whatever issues it wants. 
And of course, with Duran and his objects, we noticed that some of these entities would play musical chairs, is what I like to call musical chairs, where they would swap places with one another and like talk to one another and just mess around and cause problems and just trick the person. And yeah, this is no different. It can jump around between objects. So let's say eventually you'll see that she puts the meter up to the bear in the REM pot and it doesn't go off after she crosses over the little boy. But that's the thing. Those things are still there. The negative things are still there because it's jumping around. It's not next to it because it wants them to have a false sense of security to make them think that the bear is not haunted anymore. Which is very diabolical. But like I said, nausea gets significantly worse. Also, if you hear random noises like growls and gurgles, that's my acid reflux that I could not edit out of my videos because it's overlapping me talking. So I'm sorry if it sounds like paranormal phenomena, but it's my body like going against me for real, for real. All right, at 10 minutes and 55 seconds in, my stomach pain spikes. 17.35, headache. Around 25 minutes in, my headache disappears, but the nausea is still there. Now let's go into my deduction of my psychic impressions. Like I stated at the beginning, I think there are multiple things associated with that bear. I do believe there is residual energy of a little boy with brownish hair and blue eyes, but I think there is a fractal type of energy of that person when they were young that's still alive. I feel as if this child suffered abuse at home by a dominant male figure, allegedly. I can only say allegedly. I do feel as if at the time he owned the bear that he suffered bleeding wounds in his mouth from the extremely vivid dream that I had about my mouth bleeding out of nowhere. Now, could it be a result of abuse from the male dominant parental like figure? Perhaps. Could the boy have had issues, health issues with ulcers in their mouth? possibly. This is where interpretation comes into play and where our deductions or our interpretations slightly differ from one another. The imagery of seeing the child in white with angel wings could symbolize that his inner child was left behind with the bear. And I'm hearing Claire audiently, big boys don't need stuffed animals or something to that effect. That bear feels like it contains a huge piece of him because that was his favorite thing in the whole world, which kind of makes me really sad. Now one could say angel wings with the child can mean that they're past, absolutely. But I don't feel that. I don't feel that they're deceased, especially since I'm feeling the abuse I'm feeling the abuse element. I feel what Selena was experiencing was the integration of the boy's energy being reconnected to love and the rest of like the body and his family because it's something he desperately needed. And also I was getting flashes of psychology and child development. That is one of the main courses that I had to study during my time in college, but it's just giving me like child development and the issues that can be caused through certain types of parenting styles. The three other entities I was seeing are a product of negative energy that formed into thought forms. 
The dominant male wolf-like energy is a product of the dominant male figure that was in the boy's life. I'm guessing a father figure doesn't necessarily have to be the biological dad, but someone in the boy's life with major influence and abusive behavior. This was created from that man's behavior and emotions. The second thought form looked so freaking scary that I cannot even draw it, like I said, but I believe that this entity is a product of the abuse that eventually took shape. At the same time though, it also looks like part of the father's attachment. I believe, and when I say father, like father figure or dominant male energy, I'm referring to that. But I feel like, and I know I'm probably gonna lose people here, but it was hard to tell if it was the attachment of the father or the product of the behavior and emotions that scared the child. But technically it can be both because thought forms consume negative energy to grow. So I feel like it's something like that. And again, I probably lost every single one of you. That is okay. If you don't agree with my interpretation, it's fine. I'm not going to be offended. I know a lot of the things that I teach here are like beyond most people's, you know, um, I don't know what you want to call it, imaginations or beyond people's cognitive ability, what have you. I'm not sure, but that's what I feel. It really feels this this is the this is the thing that I believe is making me sick. Then the third thought form that looks like a child's drawing of a person's face with the bulgy eyes and off-centered mouth feels like the child's representation of his feelings within himself. And you know, part of the images I was seeing is an actual drawing that the child made of himself. You ever seen the scary movies how You'll have a child that's experiencing a haunting and then they'll draw themselves and like how they feel next to something creepy. That is the vibe that I'm getting. So I'm in the editing phase of this video that I made for you guys and something just clicked and sometimes information comes this way. It's very like broken up sometimes, but I just realized the three different entities that I'm seeing, like the three thought form entities, are actually three different facets of one entity. Sometimes this stuff's confusing, especially when they can shapeshift and they can switch their faces on a dime. And so actually the three different entities, it's three different facets. So instead of editing the entire video, we're going to use this as a learning experience for myself because I'm still learning like you guys, but also for people who are watching. So excuse my little interruption, but yep, that is what I realized while editing. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, leave them down below and hopefully I can answer them. Okay. Even if the boy's energy was integrated, those entities or negative energies, if you want to call them that, are still attached to that bear. And it would be best if Selena cleansed it thoroughly or just got rid of it. Plain and simple, but then also cleansed her space afterwards. The bear is still making me sick, so that's how I know it's not safe yet. Not to mention, a child's spirit isn't going to be conniving or manipulative enough to know how to influence a person to make them buy a haunted object. That's something negative entities do, not a child or a toddler spirit. I know the ghost equipment said one thing, like it had its own little story that it went with what Selena and her husband were saying. But remember, spirits and when I say spirits, I mean negative spirits and entities lie. <laughs> they lie. Just like living people. What's still attached to the bear is still there. That negative stuff is still there. 
Selena and her husband will continue, and I hope I'm completely freaking wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I don't care if I'm wrong, but I hope I'm wrong here. But I feel as though Selena and her husband will continue to have health-related issues in addition to weird dreams or nightmares. And lastly, the REM pod and meter didn't pick anything else up after the fractal integrated because the negative thought forms moved away from the bear so they don't become detected to trick them. It's a classic trick they play. So you lower your guard and think that everything's okay until things are not okay. And then they're gonna be like, what's going on? And it's gonna stump them. Maybe not Selena, she might figure it out down the road. But it might be very um, confusing for a little bit. But that's all I have here. So guys, if you stayed and watch this entire video past my whole thought form deduction thing. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, I will be coming at you again soon with another video. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all soon. Peace out.